If I rotate this small triangle in the same orientation as the blue one, I'm going to have the following. Hey, welcome back to Beard Squid. In this video, we're going to be solving this hard question here using simple middle school mathematics. So, okay, so let's redraw this diagram. We know that we have the base length of 12 centimeters and the side width of five centimeters. We're trying to work out the distance between A to B. And we also know that we have these triangles inside the rectangle that are perpendicular to the diagonal. Okay, so this diagonal from one side to the other side, uh, and this little triangle here is perpendicular to the diagonal, which means it's at 90 degrees. Same at A, we have this line here, which is perpendicular, which means it's at 90 degrees. So we're trying to figure out A to B. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're just going to do this one step at a time using middle school maths, remember? So this shaded triangle here, this purple one, we know that we have a base length of 12 and a side width of 5 centimeters. So what we're going to do is use Pythagoras to work out the hypotenuse. So remember that's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So as long as we agree that the hypotenuse is our c, a and b can be interchangeable between 5 and 12. So let's say 5 squared plus 12 squared is going to be equal to the hypotenuse squared, which in this case is c squared. So, we know 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared, that's 25 plus 144 is equal to c squared, and then the square root of 169 is equal to c, which is exactly 13 centimeters. Square root of 169 is 13. So now that we know that the diagonal of the rectangle is 13 centimeters, we can now start working out the small lengths from A to the vertex and B to this vertex. Now let's consider this large triangle, this blue one, and let's compare it to this small triangle, this pink one here. Before we move on, let's identify that this is a rectangle by indicating the right angles at each vertex. Now we're going to use similar triangles to identify the length side ratio between the big triangle and this smaller triangle. So let's draw out the two right angle triangles. I know that I have a base length of 12 centimeters, my hypotenuse is 13, and this side length here is 5 centimeters. Now, if I rotate this small triangle in the same orientation as the blue one, I'm going to have the following. Now I know that my right angle is here, and that should be right there. Opposite my right angle is my hypotenuse, which is 5 centimeters. The length that we're trying to work out is this length here, which corresponds to this side here of my triangle. So before we move on, let's establish that this rectangle has a set of parallel lines. So we have this set of parallel lines running across the top and the bottom. And of course, we have another pair of parallel lines running vertically. And I can draw in this transversal across the diagonal of my rectangle. Now, this angle here corresponds to this angle in the triangle. And if you look across, the alternate angle on this side corresponds to this angle here. So this angle and this angle are equal in both triangles. And we know to test for triangle similarity that two triangles are similar if either they are equal angular or their side lengths are in the same ratio. So note that either one of these properties is sufficient to prove that two triangles are similar. And since the angles of any triangle add up to 180 degrees, if two angles of one triangle are equal to two angles of another triangle, then the remaining angles of the triangles must also be equal. So in that sense, we know that one set of angles is alternate and the other pair of angles is 90 degrees. Therefore, we know that the third angle will be the same since the interior angles of a triangle equal to 180 degrees. So using similar triangles, we can find the missing side length, which we will label x, by setting up the side ratios. So we know that 13 over 5, this is my 13 and this is my 5, should be equal to the side ratio of 5 over x, since we're using corresponding sides of similar triangles. Now we can multiply both sides by x, that's going to cancel out my x on my right hand side and it's going to give me 13x divided by 5 is equal to 5. Now I can times both sides by 5, that's going to cancel out the 5 on the left hand side, leaving me with 13x is equal to 25. And then finally, if I divide both sides by 13, that's going to cancel out the 13 on the left hand side, giving me x is equal to 1.92 centimeters. 
OK, so now that we know that if we redraw this diagram, we have a length from B to the vertex as 1.92 centimeters or 25 over 13. What we need to do is we need to find out this length here. Now, you may have noticed that these two smaller triangles are congruent and you'd be right. However, I'm going to continue to work with similar triangles like I did with this triangle here to work out the value of Y. So consider then this small red triangle against this larger blue triangle. I'm going to set these up as similar triangles. Now I know that I have a right angle triangle, my hypotenuse is 5, and the side length is Y. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Now also I have a right angle here, the base length is 12, I have 13 as the hypotenuse, and the side length is 5. Of course these triangles share this same angle, this angle is shared between both triangles. And if I draw it on the diagrams, it's this top angle here, as well as this angle here. So these angles are equal. And of course, we have right angles in both triangles because we know that this length here at point A is perpendicular to the diagonal. And we also have a right angle at each vertex of my rectangle. Since two angles are equal in one triangle to two angles in the other triangle, we know that the remaining angle is going to be equal. And hence, we have equal angular triangles. So let's set up our side length ratios. We have 5 over y, which is my hypotenuse over y, which is corresponding to 13 over 5. And again, we just need to do the math here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. That's going to cancel out my 5 on my right-hand side, which gives me 25 over y is equal to 13. And then if I multiply both sides by y, I can eliminate the y on the left-hand side, which leaves me 25 equal to 13y. Finally, if I divide by 13, I end up getting y is equal to 1.92 centimeters. So finally then, we've got all the information that we need, including the shorter lengths from b to the vertex and from a to the vertex, which was 1.92. And remember, the actual value was 25 over 13. Now we're going to use that because it's the exact value without any rounding. So recall in step one, we worked out the diagonal, which was 13 centimeters. And now all we need to do is 13 minus 25 over 13 minus 25 over 13 which will give me a value of 169 over 13 minus 50 over 13, which is equal to 119 over 13, which is approximately 9.15 centimeters to two decimal places. Of course, there are other ways of solving this, including the trig ratios. Now, if you think you know how to do that, comment in the section below. Otherwise, as always, I'll see you in the next one.